Okay, and um, welcome ulit sa ating second uh, na topic for our seminar. Okay, so ang um, aking ituturo po for today, it is all about national security. Ayan, so national security, it is under um, from section number two of the Revised Penal Code. So um, alamin daw po natin kung ano po yung mga nilalaman dito po ng lesson. So um, meron po ako mga... articles sa mga ituturo po sa inyo and the first one na gusto ko pong i-share sa inyo is yung article number 122. Okay. So article 122 that is piracy in general and mutiny in the high seas or in the Philippine waters. Okay. So meron daw po tayo ditong aaralin and that is sa piracy. Okay. So, di ba kapag um, if we think of piracy, parang it is more on one piece, Pirates of the Caribbean, and etc. So, but technically, when we speak or when we think about piracy, um, sabi po dyan, it is robbery or forced depredation on the high seas without lawful authority and done with animus forandi and in the spirit and intention of universal hostility. So, kapag we are referring to animus furandi, parang ang meaning daw po nito is intent to gain. So, by intent to gain, parang you are talagang willing to do everything to get what you want. ba diba? Yung sa pagnakaw or sa robbery. So, that is piracy. Ulitin ko ulit, ito po yung parang robbery, forcible depredation on the high seas with animus verandi, and done in the spirit spiritual of universal hostility. Okay. So, next naman daw po ang mutiny. So, what is mutiny? So, ayan po ang ating um, example or picture uh, that... Um, related sa mutiny, okay? Meaning of mutiny, it is the unlawful resistance to a superior or the raising of commotions and disturbances on board the ship against the authority of its commander. Okay, so isama rin sa lang po natin yan. So yung parang pinaka-meaning daw po ng mutiny, parang kunwari, if you are in a vessel, kunyari nasa dagat ka, and meron kayong leader pagkatapos or captain, and then parang inaaklas mo, parang nag-trader kayo, tapos gusto nyo kunin yung position niya para kayo yung mamuno. Kasi ari, ayaw nyo yung um, kind of leadership na ibinibigay sa inyo ng captain. Kasi parang gusto doon nila magkaroon ng unlawful resistance sa ship. And also parang sa mutiny daw, ito daw yung parang mag-aaklas ka laban nga doon sa captain ng barko or any officer of the said vessel. So, ayun po siya. So, una po yung sa piracy, ito po yung robbery, mutiny, ito po yung pag, ano natin, pagtalsik, or yung pag-aklas natin sa mga captains of the said vessels. So, ito po yung mga examples nung mga nabanggit ko kanina, yung unang picture po, ito po yung sa um, piracy, ba diba? Galing po sa outside um, places, yung mga nagtatangka magnakaw sa mga cargo. And also, yung second one is yung sa mutiny. Yung sa mutiny po, ito po yung, ayan, di ba? Kita nyo po, um, talagang naglalabanan po sila. Okay. So, dito naman daw po tayo sa differences para mas maintindihan daw po natin kung ano daw po ba yung Philippine waters and the high seas. So, the first one is the Philippine or the PH water. Okay, so yung Philippine water daw, it is within the Philippines lamang daw po siya. Exclusively lamang daw po sa atin yan. Ayan, all the waters also connecting the islands. So that is the meaning of Philippine waters. While the high seas, ayan, it refers to any waters of the seas, of the seacoast, which are without the boundaries of the lower watermark although such waters may be jurisdictional limits of a foreign government. Ayan. So parang kapag dito daw sa high seas, kapag lampas na raw sa exclusive economic zone ng isang territorial jurisdiction, ito daw yung parang basta labas ng territorial of the Philippines. So ayan po yung ating unang article sa national security. So, next one, we have 
the Article 134, which is rebellion or insurrection. So, basahin muna po natin yan. So, the crime of rebellion or insurrection is committed by rising publicly and taking arms against the government for the purpose of removing the allegiance to the said government or its laws. The territory of the Republic of the Philippines or any part thereof of any body of land, naval or other armed forces or depriving the chief executive or the legislature wholly or partially of any of their powers or prerogatives. Okay. So, paano daw po ba nakokomit um, yung rebellion? So, isama na rin din daw natin yung insurrection para mas ma-define po natin ang dalawa. So, the first one daw here is yung rebellion. Okay? So, the meaning of rebellion is pertaining to complete overthrow the existing government. Parang papalitan mo daw yung present administration and also that is the intention of the public uprising and taking up arms. So, kita po natin sa dalawang pictures, di ba? Parang ang daming mga tao, they are publicly um, parang gustong uh, magsama-sama to unite or fighting on their rights, di ba? Para sa ikagaganda daw po ng lahat. Okay? So, number two, or yung second one natin is yung insurrection. Insurrection commonly employed in reference to a movement which on six minor in changes. Parang um, they just wanted to change a little sa government. Pero hindi po tatanggalin yung exist existing government. Ayan, parang konting changes lamang daw. Hindi daw po to same as nung sa rebellion. Pero balik po tayo doon sa rebellion. So, paano daw po ba nakokomit ang rebellion? Okay? So, sabi daw po dito, um, it requires a multitude of people, okay? And there must be a sizable number of persons hindi daw pwedeng iilan lamang daw yung mga taong magpa-participate dito. Hindi raw pwedeng 10, 15, 20, basta mas maganda daw, mas madami. Kailangan daw kasi ng multitude of people. And what is the purpose of rebellion daw? So, the purpose of this is to remove the allegiance to government or its laws, the territory or the public or any partner. So, ayun po siya. And also, ayan, di ba naka-under lang yung complete overthrow. Um, dito daw po sa government or its laws, meron daw tayong two types of overthrow. Ayan. So, meron daw tayong unang tinatawag na complete overthrow. Yun po yung sinasabi ko earlier. So, sa complete overthrow daw, is papalitan mo daw yung administration. Ayan. And you will replace it with a new one. And the second Overthrow is a partial overthrow. So, paano daw po ba nakakomit ang partial overthrow? Partial overthrow, it is a portion of a territory that is taken away to form another government different from that independent existing government. So, para mas maintindihan natin, let us summarize it. Okay? So, sa complete overthrow, parang you will change or parang papalitan mo yung form of government ng buong Philippines. Okay? Change change it with a new one. Secondly, sa partial, you will just take a portion and change its mode of administration. So, iyon po yung sa Article 134. Next one is Article 134A, which is the Kudita. Okay? So, mahaba siya, pero basahin pa rin natin. <laughs> so, the crime of kudita is a swift attack accompanied by violence, intimidation, threat, strat strategy, or stealth directed against duly constituted authorities of the Republic of the Philippines or any military camp of installation, communication networks, public utilities or other facilities needed for the exercise and continued possession of power, singly or simultaneously carried out anywhere in the Philippines by any person or persons belonging to the military or police or holding any public office or employment with or without civilian support or participation for the purpose of seizing or diminishing the state power. 
Okay. So, let us um, straight forward kung paano daw po ba nakokommit ang kudita. So, kudita daw, usually committed by uniformed men, personnel, yang ito ito daw po yung mga yang um, ito yung mga sorry yung mga yung mga military okay so the military or this is the members of the police force ito po yung mga ginagawa nila so this act or the purpose of this is to seize or diminish a state power para hindi raw ma-exercise ng government o ng administration yung kanyang specific power under the law. So, we have here sa next page on what is the essential features of kudita. Ayan po. Sabi po rito, it is accompanied by swiftness or secrecy. Okay? So, In this essential features now, um, the success of the acts depends on this strategy or stealth. Meaning, hindi daw po alam kapag susugod na yung tao o yung mga um, maraming taong um, pupunta. So, as compared to rebellion, parang yung rebellion kasi, um, needed mo daw ng mga tao. Maraming multitude of people, public uprising, yung kailangan ma-involve. Pero kapag sinasabing kudita, It can only be done by a few people or a few persons, a few uh, military personnel, and it is accompanied by swiftness or secrecy. So, meaning it is done by secret. Now, it is initiated by soldiers or members of the police force with or without civilian support. Okay? So, parang kung sino sino lang daw pong gusto, parang... Kunwari, may mga taong nagpa-plan pero ayaw nilang ipaalam because it is confidential. Parang ganun yung way of pagsugod nila. So, number two, or yung purpose natin, it is power grab. Ayan, it is also same as sa rebellion. So, parang dito raw papasok yung mga types of overthrow. Yung complete or yung partial na overthrow. or just merely to destabilize the government. Parang as distinguished from rebellion as the manner of commission. Um, sa rebellion daw kasi, di ba, um, kakasabi ko kanina na rising publicly. Um, whereas kapag kudita daw, it makes use of secrecy or strategy or stealth. So parang mabibigla na lamang daw yung mga tao yun. So kahit pa ulit-ulit ko sabihin, ito po talaga yung pinakamini ng kudita. Kasi doon sa rebellion, parang masisindak daw yung mga uh, yung government. Kasi public uprising, di ba? Sizable, number of people. Pero kapag kudita naman daw, parang magugulat na lang sila kasi it is done in secret. Okay? So, sa next article na po tayo, which is yung murder. So, before tayo magpatuloy sa murder, alamin daw natin what is the meaning of murder. So, it is the unlawful killing of any person not constitutive of parricide or infanticide. So, ibig sabihin daw po niyan, ang pagpatay daw po ng isang tao ay talagang um, mas violent daw or mas karumaldumal daw ang gawa niya same as sa hayop, ito raw ay ma-define natin as murder. Okay? So, ayun po siya. And also, meron daw po tayo mga elements of murder. Okay? So, sorry. Um, di ko napalitan yung nakalagay dito. So, ano siya? Article 248. Murder siya. Okay? So, dito sa elements of murder, we have the first one which is treachery. Okay, by treachery, it is by taking advantage of superior strength with the aid of armed men or employing means to weaken the defense or of means or person to ensure or afford immunity. Okay, so ang pagpatay daw po ng isang tao na labag sa batas, for example, kapag kayo daw ay pinatay ng patalikod, same as the example dyan sa picture, ayan, that will be um, called treachery. So, letter B. So, that is in consideration of a price or reward or promise. Okay? So, in this um, element daw of murder, um, ito rin papasok yung type of killing na parang sumusunod ka sa isang tao 
kasi he or she will pay you to kill someone. Parang, um, for example, para hindi uh, masira yung pangalan mo, yung dignity mo, you will pass it to someone para makapatay. Okay? Letter C. By means of inundation, fire, poison, explosion, shipwreck, stranding of a vessel, derailment, or assault upon a railroad, fall of an airship, or by means of motor vehicles, or with the use of any other means involving great waste ruin. Okay? Parang gumagamit ka raw ng isang bagay para makap- makapinsala or makapatay ng isang tao. Ayan, for example, gamit mo yung lason para mamatay yung tao. Fire, that will cause sunog. Kunyari, sa bahay, para nagpasabog ka. Ganyan. Kaya po yung mga example ng letter C. While in letter D, on occasion of any the calamities enumerated in the preceding paragraph or of an earthquake, eruption of a volcano, destructive cyclone epidemic or other public calamity. So by this killing daw naman ay pinapakita ang um, pagkakaroon daw ng opportunity okay, ng isang tao na makapatay in the midst of calamities. Okay? For example, um, meron nangyaring flood or baha sa inyo and then nakita mo yung kaaway mo na lulusong, parang lilikas pa. Kasi napakataas na, lampas tao. And then, hindi siya marunong dumangoy. And then, nakita, um, meron siya nakita, nakaaway. And then, nakita nung kaaway niya siya. And then, parang sabi niya, this is a great time para ma- ma- makapaghiganti ako. So, naging cause is linunod niya and naging ending, namatay siya. Parang ganun yung naging cause of death ng taong iyon. So, parang ganun siya, di ba? <laughs> Okay, so let, next is letter E with evident premeditation. So parang in this, parang pinaghandaan mo daw or you plan to kill someone, ba? Diba? Parang pinaghandaan mo kung paano yung klaseng murder yung gagawin mo sa taong iyon. Last, or ano pala, di ko pala nadagdag. Okay, so meron pala dito sa akin na sinulat ko pa. Ayan, so may letter F pa. So, with cruelty by deliberately and inhumanly argumenting the suffering of the victim or outraging or scoffing at his person or corpse. Um, parang dito daw ay pinapahirapan mo daw yung tao. Ayan, parang you will make him or her suffer before siya mamatay. Okay? So, yun lang po siya doon sa murder. Okay. Next. or yung ating last na article, which is yung Article 267, which is the Kidnapping and Illegal Detention. Okay? So, sabi raw dito, any private individual who, should, who shall kidnap or detain another in any other manner deprive him of his liberty. Okay. So, let us dif- differentiate muna yung kidnapping and illegal detention. So, kidnapping daw here, it is more of dinukot mo yung isang tao. Ayan, parang um, by kidnapping, parang kinuha mo siya, tapos itinago mo siya in some places para hindi siya makita ng mga tao. Okay? In illegal detention naman daw, parang irerestrain mo siya or hindi mo siya mapapaalis kapag hindi mo paraw nakukuha yung needs mo o yung mga ninanais mo. Okay? So, balik po tayo sa last, ay sa coma. Okay? So, dito daw sabi, shall suffer the penalty of reclusion perpetua to death. So, by reclusion perpetua to death, it means forever ka na daw makukulong. Okay? Parang, there is no chance na ikaw ay makapag-bail or anything para makalabas ka sa kulungan. So, ito daw po yung mga four Um, classifications kumpara daw na kukumit ang kidnapping. So, if the kidnapping or detention shall have lasted more than five days. Ayan. Okay? So, next one if, next is if it shall have been committed simulating public authority. Parang 
for example, nagkukunwari ka daw na police para parang you are impersonating other people para hindi ka mahalata or mahuli. Okay? So, third one is, if any serious physical injury shall have been inflicted upon the person kidnapped or detained, or if threats to kill him shall have been made. Okay? Parang kung dito daw is pinatakot mo raw yung tao na kinidnap mo, parang sinaktan mo daw siya, kaya maging cause, meron na daw siyang serious physical injuries. Galing sa pagbubugbog or anything na um, pinahirapan mo pa while you are kidnapping this person. Lastly is, if the person kidnapped or detained shall be a minor, minor de edad daw po, female or a public officer. Okay? So, parang kung ang detention daw ng ginawa ng isang tao, okay, parang may physical injuries daw, okay, dito sa minor na tao, sa babae, kunwari, parang mas lalo daw, um, for example, sa minor de edad, mas nag uplift daw yung case. Dahil, ay tawag dito, mas lalo mo daw pinatinday yung ginawa mo dun sa person. Okay? So, magigive lang po ako ng example for this article. So, parang may isang person daw po na kinidnap and parang in this scenario naglalakad siya sa kalsada but bigla siyang hinuli ng kampo ng taong ito. Okay, parang hindi na ako magbibigay ng name para ano na lang, safe. <laughs> so now, yung victim ay na-detain and during... Um, his or her um, detain, hinihingan daw siya ng mga kampo nito or yung mga suspect ng pera that cost mo, kunyari, um, in money. Para bigyan na natin ng amount, kunyari, a million pesos. Ayan. Pero si suspect nag siya kasi wala siyang ganun kalaking pera. Kasi normal na person lang naman siya. Hindi naman siya rich. Kaya, Naging cost nun, continuously siyang pinapahirapan, may abot na raw na pagbubugbog, and halos daw na may, um, kunwari, may naging sexual assault na din na nangyari. So after that scenario, kunyari, napakawala na siya, na kuha na nila yung gusto nilang makuha sa, sa victim. Ayan, parang si victim daw ay nag-filed ng case dun sa mga nangidap sa kanya. na illegal detention, na included daw ang kanyang physical serious injuries. Okay? Also daw kasi, uh, meron ako na search sa internet kasi kapag dinetain mo daw ang isang tao and then maraming bagay pa or any kinds of um, parang pambubugbog or anything na ginawa mo, mas na-elevate daw or mas naglilift daw yung kaso ayan, ng suspect kasi included na daw ito yung serious illegal detention. Okay? So, if napatunayan daw, this will serve as reclusion perpetua to death for those people na involved sa scene. Okay? Kasi originally, death penalty po yung binibigay dito. Pero, nag na po dahil sa revised penal code, kaya naging reclusion perpetua to death. Okay? So, in lang naman po ang discussion ko po for today. Hope you are, um, hope you learn something sa aking mga tinuro. And thank you. And see you sa aking mga next seminar. Bye!